pursuant to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Can I have a moment of prayer too? Quiet silence, please. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Oops, sorry. Good evening, everyone. Okay. Let's get started. First thing we'll do is number one, the abstracts. Everyone has received the abstracts to take a look at. If there are no questions, I need a motion to approve them. I just had one question. The um, Matt on his report has about the uh, mower. That's the same mower that's in the abstract, yeah? Did she put that in there already? Mm-hmm. Well, yes, it would be the same mower. Okay. Just want to, I, I, that's what I thought, but I just wanted to make sure. Okay. We need a motion then for somebody? Motion. Second. All um, Both. Okay. I'm sorry, who seconded? Um, in there? Dave, did you second that? Yeah. Okay, sorry, I didn't. Yeah. Bob Heads, Matt, you first tonight. Hello, everybody. How are you? How are you? Good. Does everybody get the report? Yes, thank you. Are there any questions? How's the paving going? Um, pretty good. We, we're done with St. John and Remakey's Avenue and hope to continue tomorrow if the weather holds up. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, but if not, they'll stay until it's... They're planning yeah. on yeah. staying, yeah. I have a couple, three things. Um, I'd like to ask permission for our two laborers, Dalton's probation was up last week, I believe. Keen's is up the 19th. I'd like to ask permission to promote Dalton to heavy equipment operator, effective the 5th today, and Keegan to motorized equipment operator the 19th. Uh, Matt, did Dalton have to have a, a training for, to be an ATO? Not official, but he's been in the equipment with us off and on. We've had him dig in, had him in the loader during snow removal. He did a really good job. He's not rambunctious on stuff. Yeah. That's good. That's okay. yeah. Didn't hit anybody. So we need a motion for that. Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Thank you. Uh, the second thing is uh, we would like to send Dalton and Keegan to Water Operator School July 25th and 26th in Morrisville for a Grade D Water Operator License. That's at a cost of 300 a person. Is, um, it, is that the same grade that like John has? Yes. Okay. Yep. The reason being, I kind of the more the merrier. Um, the health department requires mm -hmm. somebody to have on any water repair grade D license. I'll make a motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Thank you. And the last thing is permission to order the new zero turn lawnmower, which is budgeted for. Budgeted? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. That was easy. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's all I have. Very good. You might want to ask for something else. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, cookies. <laughs> <laughs> no? Okay, thank you, Matt. Thank what you. kind do you want? Uh, uh, thank you, Matt. <laughs> Bill? Good evening, everybody. Hi, Hi John. Hi. Hi. So, uh, a handful of things to, to roll through tonight. Um, at the mostly at the wastewater treatment plant, um, we do continue uh, discussions regarding the uh, biogas project, the digester project with Kraft and the industries. Um, so that is a evolving um, discussion with them. Um, the main items I have to talk about tonight are different equipment at the wastewater treatment plant. Uh, the first being the grit screw, uh, which is a piece of equipment that's been out operation for I think. Two to three, two years now. Um, Jason can probably speak to it a little better. 
Um, it's something that DEC has asked us to get back into operation. Um, the one that's there now needs to be replaced. Um, Senator Bonasek assisted in uh, securing uh, funding to go towards that project. Um, which is estimated to cost in the eighty to hundred thousand dollar range. Um, the senator was able to secure fifty thousand dollars in SAM grant funding to go towards that. Um, it is a reimbursement program, so you have to front the money, um, and then once the project's all said and done, submit your invoices for for the expenses. So. Um, we wanted to start talking about getting a ban in place um, to facilitate moving that project forward. Um, it's a hundred percent village. Yeah, we we may be able to get this city to kick in a little bit, but it, it'd be a small percentage. It's on the front end of the plant um, on the the EQ tank. Um, it's a uh, considered a headworks item, um, so it's typically not something the city kicks in for very much. Um, the next item is oh, under we're going to ask, right? Yeah. We do do each individually, right? You want to put them all together, or is that? A um, I I don't have anything to. No, ask if it's already here. We just hope. <laughs> um, probably next month we'll we'll hit you up to, oh, I think to do it look okay. to do the financing. We want to kind of um, if there's other. With the if there's other incidental stuff or relatively small items um, that we need at the wastewater treatment plant, which we're going to talk about in a minute here, um, it may make sense to roll those two or three or four items into one you know mini project um, and look to put get financing for that, um, and then when we get the ban, that it pay a portion of it, but the remainder would be financed over you know one to two to three years um, and could be a smaller hit. Yeah. On this, on the sewer budget, than having to, you know, write a check for a full hundred thousand dollars in one shot. Mm -hmm. so, um, that's what we're kind of going back and forth, and we wanted to start reviewing with the sewer committee um, this evening. Uh, the next item is um, something that is a hundred percent city. Um, it's a project to replace air compressors in the CBUD building. Um, the old compressors have been um, removed. They're actually set up as temporary right now. Um, and the new compressors um, set in place. Um, formal startup is scheduled for Wednesday um, when everything will be transitioned from the old stuff to the new stuff. Um, we did receive an invoice from SNH Mechanical um, in the amount of $72,850 um, for the project or for the work they've done. Um, that accounts for 80% um, <coughs> of the project cost, which is 95 dollars and then we hold 5% retainage on, on their request. So we're paying 75% of the project cost. All the new parts are over there, all the new parts are in. It's just a function of doing the formal switch over. Um, so we would ask the village consider uh, making that payment. I'll make that motion. Second. <coughs> Second. One favor? Aye. 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 Both? Carry. Thank you. Um, like that, but that is 100% city cost and within the budget that we had in place for it. Um, Influent pumps are something we've kicked around for the last couple of months. Um, the village did authorize doing the re rebuild on the two existing ones, um, but we really feel it would be um, prudent to have one backup pump in place. Um, it is a large piece of equipment. Um, we got a quote for a new one, and I think it was twenty-six or twenty-eight thousand um, dollars. We have. Uh, petition the city to um, pay for the cost of the one new one and the two rebuilds, which is in the forty-five to fifty thousand dollar range. Um, we haven't gotten an answer back yet. Um, hopefully, they say yes. Um, if they don't, um, that's one of the items we would consider, you know, requesting the village put in the the band or the the, the the smaller scope project with the grit screw is to buy a backup pump or one new pump and then have the two rebuilds and one as a backup for the um, influent room. So. Um, we bring that to your attention. Um, we have a few items that are lighting related um, at the various buildings. They've obviously all got lights in them. Um, one is the sludge building. Um, lighting was replaced in there with new LED fixtures over the last month. Um, and uh, it was done by Taggart Electric at just under 10000 It was paid out of the building maintenance line item of this past year's budget. Um, we applied, the village applied for a nice egg rebate of $1,800, so that'll subsidize part of the cost of that. Um, and we're supposed to get that in six to eight weeks, so we'll uh, see how true that holds. Um, 
other lighting related items in the CBUD building um, at the back of the plant where we're doing the compressors and the sand filters are. Um, we put money in this year's budget to go towards lighting and electrical improvements there. Um, we wanted to, to, I guess, get the okay to start getting quotes um, for that um, replacement equipment um, and assuming it's within budget to uh, move forward with uh, that work. So uh, I guess we, we bring that up. Um, I'm sorry. Sure. Um, we want to get quotes to replace the lighting in the CBUD building, which is a budgeted expense um, in the 2017 O&M budget and is 100% city cost. Um, the other lighting related item is the Influent building. Um, we had gotten a budget price um, a couple of months ago for $8,200 to replace lights there. Um, we would um, ask the village consider to either get additional quotes and do that work under the building maintenance light item of the budget, or that's something that could also be rolled into the um, the band cost, the you know the, the financing cost that, that we're talking about. So um, we don't have to make a decision on that tonight, but wanted to, to bring that to your attention. Um, a bigger item that we'll talk about. We've talked about over the last few months um, is the influence screen, which <coughs> is the piece of equipment that would address the rags and um, debris that comes into the wastewater treatment plant that um, clogs pumps and uh, creates a lot of wear and tear on equipment and um, makes it have to be replaced and maintained a lot more often. Um, we've gotten some initial quotes from equipment vendors and the screen itself for that size and what it would have to handle um, is in the range of two hundred fifty to three hundred thousand dollars for the screen itself um, which is a huge expense um, that's to get it basically delivered to the parking lot and then it's got to be installed in the influent building um, and it should really have a building installed over top of it you know with our uh, winter weather um, it's, it's going to have water lines running to it um, so it's not something that you want to have exposed to the elements um, especially after making that kind of an investment on it so um, the state does have a program out currently that could potentially fund a portion of that cost it's the water quality improvement program uh, through New York State DEC I think they're in the sixth or seventh round of it um, this year if they funded that project it would be uh, potentially a 40 percent grant um, that project over the last few years what things it pays for and how much is grant and well how much is grant and then it ranges a little bit year to year um, just on this year's package um, it's a 40 percent so um, you know if we use very large round numbers you know it's a million dollar project um, 40 percent it'd be four hundred thousand dollars which would leave a large yeah. large amount to be financed Is the city any any way the city would kick in money for something like this uh, potentially, um, but again, it's at the front of the plant that they don't generally contribute a whole lot of dollars for. Um, there is potential, um, and, and probably Jason will bring it up, um, if, if with the sand filters that the city does pay for, um, if the sand, is some, the sand in one of their filters is being replaced right now, and it's the first time in <coughs> since they've been in place in 15, 16 years, um, if they get in there and they find a lot of rags and a lot of debris at that point, um, if the screen was in place, it would have taken them out before ever getting to the sand filter. So it's something that w protects not just all the village's parts and pieces, the influent pumps and the RAS pumps, you know, and, and like that. Um, if it's found to be in the sand filters, then, you know, it's it's and reason to ask the city to pay for a portion of the influence screen because it's not just affecting the stuff in the front of the plant it, it carries through the entire facility and is really a detriment to every you know part and piece in there um, in with the with the grant application deadline being Jan July 28th we've only got this meeting and the July meeting to do not decide anything unless we have a, a special meeting for that purpose if we apply for the grant are we then obligated to go ahead with the project no, sir. How big a deal is the application? Do you know? Um, it's it's involved, but it's uh, it's doable. It's through the CFA process. Um, it, it was just announced last month. Um, it, I mean, we could wait till July one and try to get our ducks in a row a little more and give you guys a little more time to, to kick it around. Um, 
Well, I'm thinking if we can't get any kind of funding to help with that, 600000 Yeah, it's a no-go. As much as I want, it's not a no-go as far as I'm concerned. I mean, I don't know what the rest of the people feel, but the wastewater treatment, we're having a problem keeping the levels the way they are now. Right. As much of this is going to help, unless we get the city kicking in and we get grant money or something like that to make the, a lot lower cost mm -hmm. for us, Right. I would say... Yeah, it's not feasible. If the city uh, sees that these rags are going in, it's causing their, the part, their portion to right. go up, and they want to kick in 30 or 40 percent, well, then now we're talking yes. about something different, you know right. what I mean? Well, that, I mean, and uh, that, that may dovetail in it as um, right. the sand's coming out um, right now, so. Well, I was just saying, we'll say hold off an hour and we'll see what yeah. they, let them, the city take a look and see what they say about it. Okay. Because in case we get, unless we get some kind of more of a commitment, I think that's, it's a big too big of a nut to take on. As much as we need it and right. like to have it, there are other things we just don't have the income coming in for it right now. Sure. Okay. Just a thought. Yep. Um, a role kind of out of the wastewater treatment plant um, and just a, a project that Soil and Water is coordinating, but um, the Water Street floodplain restoration project. Um, the village coordinated a couple of reports being prepared um, and coordinate and currently I know that's I believe that's in design and they're coordinating with NYSEG to get the line relocated. Um, the uh, New York Water Grants um, is a program that the village applied for uh, two years ago in round one of the program which is a, it's a 60-40 grant loan program. Um, we haven't been approved in the first two rounds. Um, they're currently rolled into round three. Um, the project scope was to replace water lines on Burton, St. John, Bruce, and Union, I believe. It's about 7,000 feet of water main um, of, you know, 80 plus year old four inch water line that's, that's um, you know, served its useful life or exceeded its useful life. It was about 30 years ago. Um, so they, uh, yeah, our, our, our application will roll into round three automatically. They did submit a, um, uh, an updated <coughs> a form to provide updated dates and updated information. Um, just the, it's, the application's two years old now, so the cost and the scope will stay the same, but we would look to put in new dates um, and just some updated information. So um, if the village is okay with rolling that round three application in, um, we'd ask for the board to authorize the mayor to sign the, the updated application that we're going to be um, putting together. I'll make that. Attempt put together. <coughs> Any second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Bill, remember the, the map you had a year or two ago where it showed how old some of the water lines were, that it yep. was color-coded? Yep. Is that kind of like painting a mat, a, a bridge when we're done? With a, we're going to have to start back at the beginning, or is there going to be a decade or two or three where we're pretty well caught up as far as the age of the water line? Um, you're probably never. I mean, so I, you know, it's it's... <laughs> You know, the village has made a tremendous inv investment in your water lines, um, which is commendable. Um, but it's, you know, you have a number of them that have been in place for a, a, a long time. And, the, you know, when they were put in, they served, you know, their capacity and goal at that time. And that may be a little different than the current standards and goals for your water system today. So, so when we first, we first approved them, this was the same water pipe they were talking about in 1985 to go down and change that needed. So, and which never got done because everybody w didn't want to take the, yeah, the move to go ahead and take the initiative to do it. We did it. At the time we started replacing them, some of those, those lines were almost 100 years old. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, uh, even the ones on Maple Street, they were all asbestos. They were, just, they, were, they were a nightmare to try and change. The ones that we have left, even if we do the ones on, on, on Union and Bruce and those over there, we still have some old ones that are going on Route 10, going toward Hancock on Prospect, that's that's some really old lines as well. So, it's and by the time you even get to them, you, now you go back to the ones you did 20 years ago or 30 years ago, yeah. Okay, I'm sorry, Ken. Yep. Oh, thank you. Um, so we'll, we'll put that together, um, and that goes in June 23rd, um, okay. and then we'll probably find out in three or four months. Uh, <coughs> Townsend Street project we did last summer um, that was that had secured a fifty thousand dollar grant from Senator Bonasek through the SAM program. Um, we are returning some paperwork they sent down to hopefully get reimbursed for that project um, at this time. So that'll probably take another year. 
they they're you know, we get these grants I just want people to know we get these grants and it's nice to send it against the money but by the time we do them and get it it's, it's like almost like a three-year process we've just finished everything we mailed it in it's probably gonna take us close to a year before we get that back so it's an outlay for the village. It's a lot of outlay we have to put up to get it right um, we roll from Townsend Street a completed project um, to Shepherd Street um, which is a uh, obviously a village street with an embankment on the, the one side of it. Um, we just bring it to the village's attention. It's been on uh, Roger and the DPW's radar for some time. Um, some of the guide rails, the slope up there, um, you know, are, are sloughing off in spots. Um, and it's something we want to take a look at to see if there should be funds invested in that, if that street should be upgraded, not, not just doing a pavement overlay, but you know, drainage and retaining the wall work. Um, we actually got a quote from the soil nail um, contractor did the, did the work um, on Townsend Street last year. Um, they're a uh, county, the count, they have a county bid contract, so they come around once a year and do stuff. Uh, we got quotes from them for uh, two sites up there, and one was uh, 50 some thousand, and another was 150,000. So um, to, to do that method of, of, of repair. Um, I'm not saying that's, you know, the recommended, or I'm not making the recommendation to do that tonight, um, but it's, it's something we are um, looking at as to what the best, in, in conjunction with Roger and the DPW, to what the best approach is to that street. And well, we have to make a decision pretty soon because I just got a letter from Senator Bonasek for another 50,000, 50, 50 to 100,000. Right. And, and we think that's, that's a project that's, you, if you go by Shep and you look, especially down by Trip, it's really, Trip Avenue is really starting to cave in. And if we don't do something with that, we're going to have a, a right. real problem on our hands. We, we don't want to get to the point where there is a failure like we've, like we've had in some of the other, you know, spots in the village over the years. Um, you know, it's tough to make, you know, the call to, to spend money on something, but um, it's also tough when there's a failure and you have to close a street or something like that. Um, so that's the kind of the balancing act. Um, that, okay. that you're up against. Um, the last item on our agenda is um, our annual service agreement um, for Delaware Engineering, um, which we tie with your guys' um, annual budget. So we would request the village board authorize the mayor to sign our um, general services agreement for the 2017-18 budget year. Um, the amount is $4,550. Um, it's been the same amount for the last 10 years. I'll make a motion that we approve that contract. Seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Right. That's Thank it. you. Thanks, Thanks for Thank you. Jason? Everybody got my report? Yes, thank you. The right one, not the wrong one. <laughs> well, we got two. Yeah. Uh, any questions? Beautiful. I have uh, nothing tonight other than the plant seems to be running very well. As uh, Bill mentioned, number, filter number five is going through sand replacement today. They started sucking the sand out today. We should be able to get into it hopefully tomorrow to inspect it. Is and, uh, the sand will be out tomorrow? Depending on how far they got today. I was off today, but I just know that they were there working. So the contractor had stated that once they got started it shouldn't take long so hopefully we can get in at least the first stage tomorrow and take a look around and see what what's down in there and what's the volume how much of sand are you talking about jason oh boy a lot I mean, <laughs> like a thousand gallons or um even ballpark i couldn't even give you a give you an estimate a lot. there's a there's a lot in there they're uh for instance, they're probably 10 by 10 filter banks, and they're probably 15 feet deep. Oh, geez. They're half full of sand. Yes. So there's a lot of sand in there. Yeah. Um, More than a couple of sandbags. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's a lot in there. So what they're doing, they're bringing in um, large vacuum trucks, and they're vacuuming the sand out, and they're going to be taking it to the landfill. Um, and then once we're ready to put the sand back in, they're going to blow the sand back into the filters. So um, filter number five, hopefully this week, possibly next week, will be completed, and then we'll start the process 
throughout the next year to do, get some more done, depending on what the budget allows. Um, you know, as Bill spoke, if there is a lot of debris in the bottom of the filter, then we can possibly look at New York City for funding for that uh, screen, but we don't know until we can get down in there. You know, we do, we do as we air lance these things and do maintenance on them, we do find stuff like that. We'll, we'll shove an air lance down in there and it'll, it'll blow some of this debris up. So there's definitely some in there. If there's enough in there to warrant New York City kicking in some money, I can't speak to it until we yeah. can see it. So. It would be nice for them to help us and make it a little bit easier. Yeah, if there's a lot in there, I could, I could certainly see them doing it because it is, it's very detrimental to their filters, yeah. especially if the problems we've been having with some of these filters is because of that. Well, I'd like to have it, but it's such a big nut. Yeah. yeah. Might be a thing where bad news is good news. In this case, it might it be. For, yeah. for a change. Yeah. Um, the rags do continue to be an issue. Um, the one pump we've been pulling apart two to three times a week. Last week was pulled apart every single day. Um, it's getting it's getting more so. Isn't well, it? yes and no. It's hard to tell with this pump because now what's happened is we've had it apart so many times and it's been ragged up so many times that the the impeller adjustment is off on the pump. So now we're gonna have, gonna have to have a company come in and reshim the impeller on it to get it back out where it should be because now there's a gap sure. that all the rags are getting stuck into. So what we've actually ended up doing is shutting that pump off and going to our standby pump. To, because that one's not in that shape just yet, so we're waiting to hear back. When, when you do this, how long does it take to do this each time you go down and do go through this process? Um, Is it something like two, three hours, four hours, five hours? No, we've done it enough now where we can do the pumps in about a half hour. When we were first starting into it, because we hadn't been doing them a lot, it was an hour process. If we pull the influent pump, that one has a electric crane where we can pick the pump up out of the base. Um, so that one's. A lot less labor intensive. The um, but it takes three people. Um, the uh, other. Let me explain why I'm saying this because if 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 we could show that it takes three men x amount of hours and you're doing it four or five times a week and you you tally it up and put it together with all the other things, it, it, it's a lot of expense. I, yeah. I, that's what I'm, I'm getting. Well, at. and then there is there has been times, more so lately that on a weekend. <clears throat> when someone has to come in to assist the operator who's at the plant to pull a pump. So, you know, that's a totally another ball game because you gotta Maybe it would be good to start keeping the records of that. Tell Shane or John. Yeah, we, we log, every time we, we pull one of these pumps, we log it. So that, that's all Maybe log something you can go over and just have an idea because if it ends up being a nice piece of change to pay for it, yeah. it, it might be something we could work with. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. You know, the, the, the RAS pump is more involved because that one the way the piping is and the way everything's set up in there, there's no way to get anything mechanical in there to help you. So you're basically pulling the whole side of the pump off and that's about, I'd say 200 pounds that two guys, and you can only get two guys in there to lift on it. So that's, Sheesh. you're in there messing around with it and that can that one can be a bear. And the, you know, the floor is slippery and it's wet because you had to pull the pump apart. And or in your cube. It's a, it's a process, so. I have no, uh, other than that, I have nothing else. That's good. It didn't cost any money. That's a good thing. That's a good one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All, all right. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Craig. Thanks, you got. Thanks, Jason. Chief. Commander. Uh, I thought I had me because Jason Bill went first. <laughs> Everybody get a report. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Okay. Um. Uh, first thing is our patrol rifles did come in on the grant. They're in, they've been brought up to standard. And um, right now we're just on hold for uh, the officers to go through the course so that they can carry it and get policy in place. And we expect that probably by August. When will that be? Chief? What's that? The training. August. Where? Oh, that, um, that one probably I think we'll go to Dal High with. Okay. That's, that's uh, we usually utilize Dal High's range, so when they do it, we try to go with them. Um, the one, I do have one request. Uh, I'm requesting permission for the purchase of the five portable radios that we had budgeted for. Our portables are getting pretty critical. They're like mystery. Wonder if they're gonna work or not. Mm -hmm. So um, that's a total cost of $1,708 through KJBL. 
I make the motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And the only other thing that I have tonight is um, I wanted to give the board an update on um, the Drug Enforcement Unit, which has pretty much been running for about a year now. Um, during the past year, DEU has made 17 felony arrests, 19 misdemeanor arrests, and multiple violation arrests. The Drug Enforcement Unit has targeted and successfully stopped marijuana dealers where the marijuana was ending up in the hands of teenagers. They've also arrested an individual who's literally selling approximately 1,000 pills a month within the village. Do you discover the next one thousand? And a profit of oh my gosh! Yeah. <clears throat> yes, that would help pay for yeah. all the stuff at the treatment plant. Um, hmm. Do you discover and then executed a search warrant uh, on a methamphetamine production location, shutting it down? They have worked with numerous local, county, and state agencies to succeed in these tasks. The goal of DU is huge, and that is determined to make Walton once again a place where you don't go to deal drugs. The members of the Walton Police Department and myself want to again thank the mayor and the village board for their unwavering support of this unit. We'll strive to continue the eradication of illicit drugs and their effects from this community. And thank you for, for oh, yes. all that they're doing. I mean, that was, it was a nice spread in the newspaper a couple of weeks ago. It was. Yeah, just letting people know that yeah. you're vigilant and watching all the time, so yeah. thank you. Now, is that a unit that just is going to be here, Paul, or, is, or does the board require to do something every so nope. often? To, okay. No, we have um, we have select officers that that is really some of their primary task. Okay, good. And they have really become very good at it. Mm -hmm. We're at a number where we can sustain it. Yes. Yes. Oh, you mean the number of officers? Yeah. Yep. yep. So. Oh, so, good job. Now tell the guys that did a good job. Are you going to be here for a while? And when Jim comes up, I want to talk to you about yes. this. Yes. Okay. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah. Okay, thank All you. Right. Thank you. All right, Steve couldn't be here. He's got to deal with the dogs, right? Some issue with the dogs. Yeah. So, Steve, you have something you want to... Yes. Um, <coughs> the code enforcer is part of the uh, flood commission. And... Uh, we have before us a coverage improvement plan that was submitted to the clerk today. And, and as far as I can muster from the information that I was given through the National Flood Insurance Program, uh, the perp our role in accepting this plan is, is, is only that. We don't have to vote on anything. It's just that we have to recognize in order to get a community rating system points with the National Flood Insurance Program, they require that we recognize this uh, report, which is called a coverage improvement plan. And that has been submitted and compiled by the Flood Commission. And it is in our possession. So I make a motion that we recognize that report okay. so that we can obtain the CRS points. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Carried. <laughs> Anything else? That's it. You need to say. That's it? That's it. Okay. <clears throat> Number three, uh, public input. If anyone would care to say anything, please raise your name and say your name so you can have a couple words. Hi, <coughs> Jim Rice with the Walton Theater Preservation Association. Uh, just to bring you up to date on some of the things in the last year and a half that I think have been really positive. Uh, the handicap ramp, which was a village and a grant and a WTPA project, and uh, just a side note on that, there's a local handicapped guy that's here in town that in a wheelchair all the time that uh, I've been doing physical therapy and he's there and he said, you know, that's the best ramp I've ever been up in my life and I've been in a wheelchair for, you know, like 25 years. So I had to pass that on to uh, the guy that designed it too. <laughs> that was a good, a good feeling. Uh, we painted the fire escapes uh, with a bunch of volunteers just finished uh, refurbishing the stained glass on the top of the balcony uh, landings and that uh, was uh, 12 different windows that are all refurbished and uh, tempered glass on the outside which will help with the heat and then they're backlit with LED lights that, that turn on at, at dusk and turn off with a timer well in the summer just a couple hours later in the winter they'll be on a few hours a few hours more and that one's uh, just done that was a grant project and a lot of volunteers the uh, ceiling in the lobby of the uh, theater part uh, fell down uh, 
several months ago now and uh, it is now repaired. Uh, we decided to go with the plaster rather than sheetrock on that and there are only two uh, companies that we could find that would do the plaster work on it. Uh, we got Delaware Engineering in to give us a report on the structure because one of the companies said that the ceiling had to be completely torn down and rebuilt because it wasn't safe enough to put new material there. Well, Delaware Engineering didn't agree with that and we didn't either. And so that project is done and we did the stairs and the offices, the uh, refreshment area at the same time and fixed the walls and repainted everything. So that uh, that really looks good. We've put in uh, out front uh, lighted signage, and uh, that was done two or three months ago. And the electric panel that you guys paid for is in and done, and that was the one, 1913 one that was there. So it's it's uh, not in operation anymore, and the, the new one is in, which is we great. Lucky. Yeah, well, it, I mean, there were no no new no new parts available for that. So I mean, if you, yeah, see, you've seen the old one. You know, I don't know why. <laughs> oh my gosh, Jesus. it's only 104 years old. <laughs> yeah. uh, current projects, uh, the we have a carpenter working on rotted wood problems around the exterior of the building, and then the painting will be done this summer, and that's a project between. The WTPA and the village, and uh, so that uh, by the end of the summer, we'll have the, the the paint done and hopefully all that bad wood replaced. Uh, we're working on stenciling repair on the walls inside the theater right now. The before we put the gutters on over top of the fire escapes, the water came down there and came in through the brick and a lot of the stenciling, not a lot, a portion of the stenciling that we had done uh, 10 years ago. Uh, fell off the walls, so they we're having that uh, redone with the same artist that did that uh, then. The big project we've got going right <clears throat> right now, and uh, mainly main reason I'm here, is the curtains, the valance, the track, the side legs curtains, the lighting pipes are all going to be replaced this summer. Uh, Mr. Dutcher was involved in that, and Delaware Engineering, uh, when the original curtains were put in. The, uh, they were suspended from the very ceiling of the building. And uh, then years ago, there was a uh, stage lid kind of put on, which was two by six framing that uh, winterized and put the, the, the rooms right back here on and closed in the stage. And so the new, uh, the new curtains and track will be hung from that uh, ceiling that was put in, uh, I'm thinking about 25 years ago now. <clears throat> and that, uh, we had four bidders, and uh, Albany uh, Theatrical Supply is the bidder that we're going with. And uh, unfortunately, same color curtains that we had before. Some of us really were looking for some different, wilder things, but that didn't go. Uh, the, uh, they've been here three times. Uh, well, they t came to do their bid specs, and then they went back twice since to make their final measurements and so on. And uh, they're, they're a very small outfit, and uh, I, I, I think we made the right decision going with a, a group like that. Uh, so that's uh, bringing up the date on those things. Uh, the future, a couple of future projects, uh, the uh, exploring the extension on the stage, and uh, if that comes through, you know, it looks like it'll be a temporary extension. That's a Delaware River stage. Uh, we're paying for that project, uh, and then uh, we're also doing some work on redoing the seating in the balcony those are the original 1913 seats up there and we're talking about doing something completely different with uh, with those seats and maybe the wings and putting a table and chair in for you and you know yeah, right. yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so some different things that are we're looking at there but that's uh, those are future future things the, the extension of the stage might happen by this uh, November's performance but uh, the tracks it was temporary they were looking at doing a temporary one uh, because to put in a permanent extension on the stage oh, involves a lot more than just wood. <laughs> it involves a sprinkler system. It involves uh, really going into in-depth. And that was... Uh, so... Not bad for a bunch of volunteers. A bunch of volunteers and a bunch of grant money and village hopping out. So, uh, yeah. Any questions? Be glad to answer them. No, thank you very much. And tell the group thank you for all the work that they're doing. We appreciate it. Well, you were here. I want to mention to Paul and Ed and Teresa earlier about the uh, the community service assignments for uh, 
mildly criminal sorts of things where their sentence would be for cleaning the, the carpeting and stuff. Do you, do you know like how much work is involved or what it well, would? Well, the, the, the carpet's not a problem. It's the floor, wood, the wood floor. Okay. And the cleaning of the floor would be great to have it refurbished. Uh, when the floor out here was put down after the 2006 flood, it wasn't, it, it was one coat of finish on it and it's worn off and it really needs to be properly finished, um, but at least cleaned. And it doesn't get cleaned as part of the regular daily maintenance uh, on things, but it, uh, so it would be a lot of hands and knees scrub type yeah. work. Uh, it would be a one-time thing or over so often? Or? Oh, it should be done every six months probably, but it hasn't been done in several years. So it, uh, it really needs to be done. I don't what type know. flooring did they put down? It's a maple. Maple. Yeah, it's a, the strips, the hardwood. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, it's good flooring. It just hasn't been taken care of well. Oh, and uh, um, Paul, we talked about it, but do you know, is it a matter of letting the court and all that kind of work is available or? Yeah. The, the court and probation would be the ones that would oversee that. And they do the super, on-site supervision on that? Or? Yeah. Usually, uh, Brian Sprague handles a lot of the community service stuff. So the courts will send that and we do that. We have one of our, Brian does that. We, we, we made sure that before we use anybody that the probation department said okay and that probation department had medical coverage on it and, and they did. So that's why we said that we, we had one or two so far people that do something. It's, it all depends on what they can do and how much, you know, but they got to be supervised. It's not that you could say, go in the theater and we'll, we'll be back in three hours and check, you know, you need to have somebody to supervise them. And do the probation provide the supervision or is that the no, place no, that's no. Okay. That's all on us. And as available and who, who it is. Some people physically can do things, some people, depending on the person that was arrested. No, there's a need there if there's anybody involved. That, okay, that, that, uh, we can look into that. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Jim. Anyone else like to say anything? Yeah. Oh, sure. Now, I've had the opportunity to speak with some of you individually about the, uh, the biodigester oh, and had some uh, and prepared an analysis based upon information that is I've obtained recently. So I just wanted to share that. I provided a copy to everyone at the board. Um, so, Dear Mayor Snow and Board of Trustees, I have prepared an analysis of the Village of Walton's contemplated biodigester project using figures provided to me and to the public by the Village's engineering contractor at, at various phases throughout this multi-year process. And I did it in chronological order, obviously, construction operation. Um, construction. To arrive at the amount necessary to bond, I applied the same formulas as presented in the initial information packet provided by the engineering firm. This was to take the principal balances of the debt carried on each bond anticipation note and add the interest accrued. Assuming design phase expenses remain where they were more than a year ago, we are looking at $410,000 in principal expenses incurred and about $12,183 of annual interest. With the cost of the smaller biodigester estimated to be six million, annual interest on that note would be $225,000. The sum of all principal and interest is $6,647,847.80. Dollars. To calculate the annual debt service, one must amortize that amount over the number of years that the project would be bonded and at the applicable rate. For this forecast, I'm using the most favorable terms presented at the March 2016 informational meeting held at the Walton Fire Hall. The terms resulting in the lowest annual payment allowed for financing over 30 years at 4%. This would result in annual debt payments totaling $384,444. Operation. To operate the plan, it is estimated that operating and maintenance costs will be approximately $75,000, an increase of $55,000 from the, the $20,000 originally presented to the Village of, uh, of Walton Board. This figure does not include the full-time equivalent employee salary who will be hired per the ESD grant application. Total annual costs. Upon adding the annual debt service and the O&M expenses, the village of Walton would need to make at least $459,444 to break even. Revenue. Turning Annually? To, what? Annually? 
Yeah, yeah annual. Okay. Uh, turning to the revenue, the village of Walton would be reliant on flow of waste for processing from area dairy, area dairy manufacturers, Saputo, Friesland, Campina, and hopefully Kraft. Ideally, these, craft, or these contracts for waste disposal with manufacturers would be of the same length as the debt service that we are carrying to provide the facility, 30 years. This, after all, is a public-private partnership. Two of the three anticipated customers are legally prohibited from entering into an agreement for such a long period of time as they are outside the sewer district. The most recent projections provided by the engineer shows disposal from area dairy manufacturers totaling 30,000 gallons of influent per day. This figure assumes $6,000 from each Saputo and Friesland Campina, another $6,000 from an unnamed other source, and 12,000 gallons from a source that is also not identified, presumably sludge from the wastewater treatment plant. Revenue from disposal will total $276,000 or $276,900 based upon 355 days of operation, assuming 10 down days estimated for maintenance. Savings. Energy savings to the village of Walton has been cited as further justification to construct the biodigester. Energy savings assumes that the operation of the biodigester will be net neutral without additional energy consumption required for biodigestion. The, the original projections showed $48,000 in energy by diverting unused biogas to a 65 kW generator. It was estimated that the original influent volumes of $55,000 would create 50 cubic feet per minute or CFM of biogas, implying that 1,100 gallons of influent would create one CFM of biogas. Most recently, the engineer furnished uh, figures for the operation of two generators that would operate to defray electric costs at the wastewater treatment plant. This troubles me as in the same spreadsheet it is stated that the 65 kilowatt generator requires 17 to 28 CFM of gas to operate. Again, based upon the original numbers provided, we can assume 1,100 gallons of waste produces one CFM of biogas. That would imply that 30,000 gallons per day of influent would produce approximately 27.3 CFM of biogas. As biogas is less efficient than natural gas, we can safely assume that the biodigester may produce enough biogas to satisfy the top end of one generator's consumption, 28 CFM, but not power two. With a newly revised energy rate of 10.10.5 cents per kilowatt hour, energy savings to the village of Walton may represent $58,149. When the revenue anticipated from the biodigester's operation and potential energy savings are added, the total is $335,000, $335,049. Given the operating expenses and debt service, of $459,444 exceed the economic benefit of the $335,049, this project would operate at a loss of $124,395 based upon the numbers provided. An alternative scenario was proposed in my meeting with Mayor Snow, Trustee Breeze, Jim Suazo, and Dave Oman on March 6th. We discussed the economics of the biodigester. It was stated that this project could not be successful without a lot of free money. It was mentioned that the pipeline grant may be able to defray one and a half million dollars of the construction of the smaller digester. The, um, the projections later provided by the engineer show another 600,000 sourced from NYSERDA in the form of annual rebates of $30,000 annually. Reducing the amount of the refinanced, uh, reducing the amount to be financed to 5.09 million in crediting $30,000 in, in NYSERDA rebates, this project would still operate at a $4,400 annual loss. Please know that I understand that the, this project was originally pursued as a proactive measure to generate revenue for the village of Walton and to support one of our village's largest employers, Kraft. I further appreciate that the change in ownership of Kraft has drastically changed the economics of this project and that was outside the control of our village leaders. With the above in mind, a changing course is necessary. This investment, with or without free money, is not one that should be undertaken by the village under the current terms. This is a significant risk that will be borne by the taxpayers and sewer district users of the village of Walton. 
The New York State Comptroller's Office has cautioned that this project causes significant concern and the Town of Walton has supported the Comptroller's recommendation that the village pursue reallocation of the ESD, the Empire State <coughs> Development Grant, to clear debt associated with the research and planning phases, eliminating the potential for taxpayer exposure. If the Board of Trustees and Mayor do not accept this analysis based upon the numbers provided by the engineering firm, I would encourage you to get second opinions on the engineering from an independent third party who has no future interest in operating the plant and a formal opinion from the village's accountant. I would suggest that these be done only after a second informational meeting is hosted by our village officials and an engineering firm for the public. Finally, I ask that this analysis be support and the supporting spreadsheets be made a formal part of the record and be appended to the minutes wherever they may be published. And also, again, the, a note in here that I, I put at the very bottom um, was that the terms on which financing for this project could be bonded have likely changed as well, which would increase the borrowing costs and lead to greater annual losses. Current rates have not been made available to incorporate in the model, and that's a result of the Federal Reserve raising interest rates 25 basis points on a couple of occasions since March 2016. So across the board, bond rates have gone up. So I would expect that the municipal debt would have as well. So. Thank you. I will show it to the engineers. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Anyone else? <clears throat> Trustee reports. Teresa, let's start with you. Uh, everybody got a copy of the summer employee list for the pool and the recreation parks and everything? Yes. And I would like to make a motion that we accept the uh, mm -hmm. candidates for hire for the summer programs. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And the pool will open on uh, June 23rd with open swim lessons and all other recreational activities beginning June 26th. The village will be offering night lessons with a limited schedule. And all rec this is something new now. All recreational sign-ups will be done at the pool on June 13th and 14th from 5 to 7 p.m. There will be no sign-ups done through the school. All interested in participating in any summer program should sign up at the pool during swim lesson sign-ups. So it's June 13th and 14th from 5 to 7 p.m. And that's all I have. Thank you, Steve. Do you have anything? Other than the plan from the Flood Commission, there's nothing to report. Dave? Oh, Jim went over a lot of it, more detail than usual, which is great. Yeah, well, Matt, we had talked about that curb cutout in front, you know, where the ramp comes down. Mm -hmm. Is that looking at all doable or possible this summer, do you know? Um, if I remember right, there's a nice side utility pole kind of close in proximity to it. Would we be able to move it enough? Possibly, to yep. I'll speak to Roger more about that. I don't know where that fits in your work of priorities, but just, it keeps coming up at the theater preservation meetings. Okay. That's it. Okay, thank you, have anything? No. Okay, number five, mayor's report. Um, I got a couple things real quick. Yeah, I, got, no, I was gonna. Uh, last month, I think it was last month that we talked about. We had a letter from New Hope Church about the sidewalk down there. Yep. And what I forgot to re real to mention, there were two names on there. It was. Mary lied to add a 39 stock, and she had asked also, but we had, we had said okay for the new hope, but we didn't mention that. So I'd like to be able to do that. I spoke to Roger. They have money in the, the chips money to do it. Do you just need a motion? Huh? You just need a motion? Yeah. I'll make a motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Opposed. Okay. <coughs> The next thing I do, like we do every year, whatever we have, we've got some foreclosures, tax foreclosure list. I want to make it available to everybody. <clears throat> First one is Andrew Bigger at 11 East Brook Street. Then we have another one, Harley Castronova at 4 Water Street. Basil Fullerton at 12 High Street. Uh, Vincent Garfolo at 11 Liberty Street. John Carwatch at 7 Benton. 
uh, Susan Mailer at 100 St. John's, James Neal at 7 Harvey, Papa's Diner at 209 Delaware Street, Picnic Estate at 19 Maple Street, George, I can't spell it, P-I-L-A-U-P-L-I-F, Palapolis, 14 Camp Avenue, um, Barbara Walker Isaac at 72 Bruce, and Dallas Ryan at 121 Prospect. Hopefully we can get some money on these, but these are, these are properties we don't get taxes paid, we'll have to foreclose on, which I hope we don't have to do. And, and that's all I have. Okay. That will be my mistake. Excuse me. Sorry. Um, first time home buyers, six. What do you want to mention, that, right? Yep, there were, um, they were requesting permission for two properties. Um, one is for $21,570. The other one is for $6,025. Um, oh, nope, excuse me, wrong thing. $15,645. So we need board approval to approve both of those first time home buyer. I'll make that motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And if we get that, that should use up just about all the money we have for first time home buyers, which is pretty good. Okay, number seven, the 12th annual community fair. To whom may concern the first United Baptist Methodist Church of Walton located at 101 North Street, is planning its 12th annual Community Street Festival to take place on Saturday, June 17th, 2017. The festival will begin at 10 a.m. and wrap up approximately 4 p.m. We would, however, need to block the street off for setup. We would like to block the street off from for the purpose at 8 o'clock so that the vendors and the street games can be safely set up. In the event of rain, we will continue with the, the festival indoors. As in the past 11 years, during the course of the day, we are planning a variety of musical acts and entertainment, incorporating musicians and talent from throughout the Walton community. Tablets will be set up in the church lawn and yard sale items, crafts, free food, and drinks. In addition, Plans are in the making for children's activities such as face painting, crafts, bubble fun, uh, balloons, chalk, etc. In order to walk, make this fun, safe, and memorable event for all, we are requesting that East Street be blocked off from the corner of Townsend to North for the duration of the festival. You may recall, as we are very thankful, that this request was approved by the Village Board every year over the last nine years. Upon approval, I will again take personal responsibility for informing the one neighbor that this would affect. In doing so, I will advise them of our intentions and assure them that we will provide access to entering and exiting their driveways upon request that they do not wish to re re relocate their vehicles for that day. Pastor Dale Ashley will be also be sure to make the UP Church is agreeable to this in this closure. With your assistance, the 12th Annual UMC Community Street Festival will be successful, as it has been the last 11 years, in providing a day full of fun, laughter, and fellowship for the Walton community. Thank you very much for your consideration. Sincerely, Laura J. Yambo, Street Festival Chair. Do I need a motion? Simple. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. And I'm sorry, is that North Street they're closing? Did they're they're going to be closing East Street <coughs> from Townsend to North. Thank Years you. ago they had it on North Street and they used to close it off. Okay, got it. All right, the next thing is the 15th annual Ford 4-H Duck Race. Cornell uh, Cooperative Extension of Delaware County would like to request your permission to hold the 15th Annual 4-H Duck Race on Saturday, July 22nd, 2017 in the Village of Walton. We plan to hold the 4-H Duck Race in Third Brook. Ducks will, f will float from Ogden Street Bridge to the Robinson Brothers Auction Barn. Volunteers will be 
at the brook to retrieve any ducks stuck along the way and at the race conclusion. A certificate of insurance is enclosed from our insurance provider, C.W. Wood Agency in Ithaca, the, the insurance carrier for all Cornell Cooperating Extensions in New York State. Volunteers from throughout the county and 4 H Club will be selling the adopted duck to raise money to help support the Delaware County 4 H program. Please contact us with any questions or concerns. Thank you for your consideration. Sincerely, John T. Hahn. Need a motion for that, please? I have a motion. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Uh, number nine, chalk day. Uh, we are requesting that the road in front of Townsend School be closed on Wednesday, June 14th, <laughs> and that we can hold our annual chalk day, chalk art day. We would appreciate if the stanchions, stanchions, yeah, <laughs> I'm sorry, too close to the road could be <coughs> could be there by 7:30 a.m. morning, so that Mrs. Cucieri could start preparing the road for the children at work. Please let me know if you need any additional information, and thank you in advance for your consideration. Mike Biden. Motion. Second. Second. Favor? Aye. Opposed? Sorry. And here we go again. Okay, uh, Walton Grange. To whom we may concern, it has come to our attention through Shelley Thompson of the Barnyard Sprouts 4 H Club that they no longer wish to provide the community service of caring for the flower bed located in Harvey Park. Due to the location proximity to the Walton Grange Hall, we would like to take that project over. Walton Grange recently celebrated 98 years of service to the community, and we are in the process of rechartering Walton Junior Grange, set number 701, for children of ages 5 to 14, under the direction of Mrs. Tiffany Snyder Jr., Grange Mo Ma Matron, who may be reached at the number. For the, for the 2017 season, the flower bed will be a joint project between the Walton Grange and the Walton Junior Grange, in anticipation of Junior Grange being rechartered and running full steam ahead in 2018. If there are any questions or concerns, you can reach me. Thank you, Sharon L. Brennan. Do you have a motion? Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Carried. <coughs> uh, the Walton Fire Department, to the Village Board, the Walton Fire Department requests the use of the Walton Village swimming pool for a drive team drill. The purpose of this drill is to verify our equipment is serviceable and introduce new drive team members to our training program. We have scheduled the drill for June 20th at 1800 hours to 2100 hours. The point of contact for this request is Steve, and Con Steve Condon and he can be reached at the number. Um, Steve Condon. I think that this is something that needs to be given to Brian. Yep. Unless, Matt, do you know about it? No, no, so Brian really needs to be contacted, so he can contact this. Yeah, we'll give, it to, we'll give it to Brian. Mm -hmm. We need to provide the okay, or does Brian do that? Or no? no, we would have to give the okay, but we just have to make sure that we, somebody has to be there to open it up. and The pool's not open? No. Well, that's why they, they want to do it then, yeah. So yeah. we have to have somebody there. I'm sure they want water in it, too. So. <laughs> <laughs> would be nice. <laughs> <laughs> we need a motion then to, to allow them to do that. Motion. I thought you just said that we need yeah. to talk to Brian. I th I, that's what I think. I don't think we can make a motion really until we. Check okay, then we're going to have to call a special meeting. I think to so. Do it. Either way, it's nice to have do it. Okay, then we'll hold off for a And that's all I have. We need to do an executive session for a little bit to talk about the PBA contract. Other than that, that's it. Need a motion? Second. Second.